the value of k, kp and kc, and the use of q in calculations. In this lesson, we will examine three aspects of calculations involving equilibrium systems. We will look first at the value of k and what information it gives us, then at kp and kc and how they are related to each other, and finally, we will investigate what Q is and how we use it. What does the value of K mean? The value of K can vary over a wide range. K can be much greater than 1, much less than 1, or somewhere in between. What does the particular value of K tell us about the equilibrium? If the value of k is much greater than 1, then the implication is that, once equilibrium is reached, we have mostly products present. Remember that the form of the equilibrium expression is products over reactants. If the value of k is much greater than 1, by much greater we mean by several powers of 10, that is at least 100 times as much, that means that the numerator the concentrations of the products, is much greater than the denominator, the concentrations of the reactants. This implies that the amounts of products are much greater as well, which is what we mean by the phrase, the products predominate. On the other hand, if the value of k is much less than 1, the implication is that, once equilibrium is reached, we have mostly reactants present. A value for k much smaller than 1, again smaller by at least a factor of 100, means that the denominator, the concentrations of the reactants, is much greater than the numerator, the concentrations of the products. So the reactants predominate. So the size of k can tell us whether we have more reactants or more products, if it's much greater or much smaller than 1. But what if the value of k is in the middle ground? that is, within the range 0.01 to 100. In this range, whether a larger value of K tells us we have more products or more reactants depends on a number of factors, such as do we have more products or more reactants in the reaction, which influences the specific form of the equilibrium expression, and what the specific concentrations are. Let's look at a couple of examples to clarify. Suppose we are looking at the equilibrium for the decomposition of N2O4. The equilibrium expression is Kc equals the concentration of NO2 squared divided by the concentration of N2O4. Let's suppose, for the sake of argument, that the value of Kc equals 8. There are an infinite number of ways the concentration could combine to give a value of 8 for Kc. One way is if the concentration of NO2 equals 12 molar and the concentration of N2O4 equals 18 molar. Then the reactant concentration is one and a half times the product concentration. Another way is if the concentration of NO2 is 0.4 molar and the concentration of N2O4 is 0.02 molar. In this case, the product concentration is 20 times the reactant concentration. So you see, a value of K greater than 1 does not necessarily indicate that the products have more concentration. Let's compare two reactions with different numbers of molecules. Let's compare the decomposition of N2O4 with the synthesis of propane, 3 carbon solid plus 4H2 gas, in equilibrium with C3H8 gas. The equilibrium expressions are shown on the right. Remember that the carbon solid does not appear in the expression. Let's choose to have the products in each reaction have a concentration of 4 molar and the reactants in each reaction 2 molar. When we plug the concentrations into the equilibrium expression for the N2O4 reaction, 
we find that the value of k is 8. When we do the same for the C3H8 reaction, the value of k is 0.25. So the difference in the number of reactants and products in the reaction gives values of k that are different by a factor of 32, even when the concentrations of reactants are the same and the concentration of products is the same. I guess the lesson in this is that you shouldn't place too much faith in the value of K indicating whether there are more products or more reactants unless the value is much larger than one or much smaller than one. The equilibrium constant using pressures of gases. For gases, the concentration of the gas and the partial pressure of the gas are proportional to each other. So, if we have a reaction like this, where the reactants and products as gases, we can write the equilibrium expression in terms of partial pressures instead of molarities. Here, P sub C means the partial pressure of gas C, and so on. K sub P means the equilibrium constant using pressures. We normally use Kp because the standard state for gases is one atmosphere. Under normal conditions, a molarity of one molar for gas would have a pressure of 20 plus atmospheres, far greater than we normally have for gases. But what's the relationship between Kp and Kc? From the ideal gas law, we know that PV equals nRT. Rearranging this, we get P equals N over V times RT. Since N over V is the molarity, this becomes P equals molarity times R times T. If we plug MRT in for P in the equilibrium expression, we get Kp equals the concentration of C times RT to the C power times the concentration of D times RT to the D power over the concentration of A times RT to the A power times the concentration of B times RT to the B power. You will note that R is the same for all four gases. It is a constant. And that T is the same as well. T is the same because to be in equilibrium, the gases must be in the same container and therefore will have the same temperature. When we rearrange this equation to separate the constant terms, the R's and T's, from the concentrations, the M's, we get Kp equals concentration of C to the C power times the concentration of D to the D power times RT to the C plus D power divided by the concentration of A to the A power times the concentration of B to the B power times RT to the A plus B power. This can be written much more simply. This part of the relationship, the concentration part, is the equilibrium expression with concentrations, Kc. The RT portion of the expression can be collected into RT raised to the C plus D minus A plus B power, according to the rules for exponents. This can be written even more simply as Kc times RT to the delta N, where delta N equals the moles of gas in the products minus the moles of gas in the reactants. So the general relationship between Kp and Kc is Kp equals Kc times Rt to the delta n power. Normally, the value of Kp is quite different from the value of Kc. For example, in an earlier lesson, we found that Kc for the decomposition of N2O4 was given as 0.212 at 100 degrees Celsius. Kp for this reaction at this temperature would be 6.49, more than 30 times as great. There is one situation, however, where the values of Kp and Kc are the same. 
That occurs when the number of gas molecules is the same in the reactants and products. Then delta N equals zero and RT to the power delta N equals one.